Hey guys, welcome back to the Airbnb clone and thank you guys for giving suggestions on features and here are the top ones and then we're going to do first, I have five selected and then if there's more time afterwards, we'll do more. So the top voted one and the one we're going to be starting with is setting up a map and improving the way we get the latitude and longitude. Right now we just have a form where you type it in and we're going to talk more about how we're going to improve that and how you can select stuff on a map. And then we're going to get into continuous integration, both for um, Heroku and Netlify, um, and setting that up on GitLab um, and using Travis or whatever other, Circle CI or whatever, uh, one whichever is easiest. And then we're going to be setting up uh, updating for both the listing and the user uh, on the website and the server. And then we're going to be doing caching. And then we're going to lastly build this thing at the bottom here. So. This last thing is going to be kind of a um, bunch of different suggestions mashed into one. So someone made a little mock-up here of what they'd like one of the screens on the app to look like. Um, and this is for searching, uh, being able to search for listings and whatnot. So both a location and then a query. And then you can see the little cards and then there's tabs at the bottom. So we're going to build that and that's going to include pagination. Um, and that way we can scroll through and page through all the different and basically get more and more suggestions or search queries. And this will also be a search as well. So anyway, that's what's going to be coming up. And that's the sequence we're going to do them in. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going on with this first one. So with the map, I went ahead and created an Airbnb account to see what they were talking about. And I'm assuming it's this thing right here where you can click on the uh, and kind of move your thing around and pick a location. Now, we're not going to be building this in this video. And the reason for that is we kind of need to have a general latitude and longitude to get that. So before, the first thing they ask you is for a street address. So then you type in like, I don't know, I'm on Hollywood. And I click that. And then after I give that and a zip code and this information, I can go to the next screen um, and I have a general latitude and longitude to show you. So now they're showing me Hollywood Boulevard and I can actually click the exact latitude and longitude. So we're gonna do that same setup there. So I thought it'd be helpful to start by adding, uh, we're gonna be using React Geo Suggest to actually get suggestions. So that's what we're gonna be building in today's video. So it's gonna look something like this. So Hollywood. And then I can click which one I want. Um, none of these are the one I want, but let's say I want this Germany one. I can click on that and now I have that. But anyway, it'll give location suggestions as you're typing. And then this will give us a latitude and longitude that we can show on the map. Um, and so then we're gonna be using this library called React Google Maps. That's what we'll do tomorrow. Um, and then we can show the marker and have you pick the exact latitude and longitude inside of Hollywood or wherever you wanna pick. So. Let's get started with the geo suggest over here. So with this, the first thing we need to set up is add a Google Maps API to our uh, HTML. So to do this, we have to first get a key. And uh, to do that, you need to go to the Google Developer Console and enable these three right here. So I've done that already. So here's what the console looks like. And you should see if you go to APIs, I have geocoding maps and places enabled. Now to actually enable these, you just search it. So for example, geocode, and it'll come up. Um, there we go, geocoding, I guess is what it's called. So you click on that and then you just click enable and you do that for maps and also places. And so after you enable all three of those, um, you're gonna just click on it. So we're gonna click on geocoding, go to credentials, and you can create an API key. Here's the API key I created, copy that. And that is what we're going to use um, right here to paste in that key. So I've already copied and pasted this script, so you're gonna do the same. And I've added inside the website, the public folder, the index.html. So here's my script, and there's my key um, placed in there. So you're gonna do the same thing. And then I also already download the React Geo Suggest library and also the types for it. So you're gonna to wanna to do that as well. So yarn add, and then also just do yarn add React Geo Suggest. All right, so once you have all that set up, you're ready to actually start coding this component. So I'm going to add it to this page over here. So we're gonna be adding it to our form over here. And ideally it's gonna replace these two right here where we're actually having kind of just a number picker for the latitude and longitude. 
Now, I don't want to have to click, you know, to the next page every time. So for now, I'm going to put it on this page while we're testing it, and then we can easily move it over when we need to. So if we come over to page one, here's where I'm going to put it. And so I'm going to create a field or a field component for that. So I'm going to come down to shared, create a new one, and I'm going to call this location field.tsx. And I'm just going to copy this tag field just as a starter. So we're not going to be using anything from Ant Design, so I'm just going to go right ahead and remove that. And we're going to be calling this, and I want to make this into actually a just regular class. So let's do that real quick. So I'm going to say export class, and I'm going to name it location field. This is going to extend react.purecomponent. And then here is the type we're going to use. We're still going to be using field props. And then we can join this with any custom props we want. For now, we're going to have just an empty object for the custom props. We might add some at a later point. And then I'm going to say a cur open curly. And I'm going to create the render function here. And now for that, I'm just going to say const destructure these guys. So these are our props. So they're coming from this.props. And we don't have a label. And here, I'm just going to get rid of all that stuff there. And then just another curly at the end should be good. And for now, I'm going to return null so I can save this and get prettier to save it and format it. So this is what it looks like. So we have a location field, um, and we're using the field props from Formic. And here are all the props that we have to use and do stuff with. So let's go ahead and render it. So if we come over here, we can grab, they have a little demo at the bottom that we're going to use. So yep, it's at the very bottom. Let's first import it. And then we can grab this and render that here. So now I don't care to use a reference. I don't need anything for that. So I'm just gonna straight delete that. Now the fixtures I think are just some hard coded values. I don't need any hard coded values for this. So I'm gonna remove that as well. The on suggest select, um, this is when we actually, someone clicks on a location. So we want to actually use that. So I'm gonna say on suggest select. And now I'm not actually sure what type to add to this field because uh, this is gonna be kind of like a place and I'm not really sure the shape of the object that it's going to give me when I select something. So in these cases, what I like to do is click on them and see if it gives me any kind of indication. So select suggest looks like there's an object called suggest I can use. And this looks like just about exactly what I'm looking for. So, so it's called suggest. So I'm going to say suggest here. And notice I even have a auto completion here. I'm just going to click on that and we can import suggest from react auto suggest or geo suggest. I mean, all right. And now the radius. So these two parameters we can play with. I'm going to make the radius. And the reason why it's mad is because this needs to be a number and not a string. Um, again, you can, I'm just going to remove the initial value altogether. Uh, so this location prop is kind of funny. So I've tried out this library before. And if you remove the location, at least for me, it complains, but it set, looks like you could just leave the location null in the um, the docs. At least it makes it seem like you can, um, because this is for uh, local stuff. So there's a location. So this is to get localized suggestions. It says the default is null, but for whatever even reason, when I use null, it doesn't like it. So I just go ahead and keep the default that they gave me, and it works just fine. Uh, so this is what it looks like to start out, and that's good to go. Um, we're going to talk about more about how we integrate this with Formic in a second. I'm just going to actually just comment this whole section out. And now I want to just console log the place so we can see what that looks like. All right. So now let's go ahead and render this so we can see what we're dealing with. So I'm going to come over here to page one, and I'm going to say field name uh, temporary. And we're going to use the location field. So now if you're following along, yours should look something like this. And now if you start typing, so New York, 
we can see some suggestions down here and I can even click on one and we can see in our console we now have some description and we can do whatever we want with a location we now have a latitude and longitude so that's perfect um, now you might notice that it looks quite ugly right now and it looks nothing like the example that they had right here right so this is a nice beautiful little select field or drop down how do we get that so they have some CSS at the bottom that they actually did to do that so they are using uh, this kind of CSS way of name spacing this so you can actually make your own classes for this um, and here's an example of what that might look like so we can actually copy their suggestion if we want to and I'm going to create a geo.css paste that in and then we can import that just right here uh, actually I guess I want to move this over here because I really just need it with this location field and now I'm going to import the geo.css and we'll save back over here and now it'll look a lot sim more similar to what we were seeing before and now I can start typing new New York and you can see and I can click on it just like that so that looks a lot prettier so this gives you an idea of how you can style it and you can change the colors and whatnot over here to the way that you like it alright so now I want to grab those values and uh, get a latitude and longitude from this because really the reason why we are doing this is so we can get a latitude and longitude and that gives us kind of a general box or general location that we can then use um, so as we can see I guess I'm not sure what all this stuff in the G maps is that might be useful to us but the thing I see here is the location so for now let's grab the latitude and longitude now if you wanted to you could just stop here and this is how you get the latitude and longitude from your users is just what they type here um, but we're gonna take this a step forward and do it with maps so now here's where we get into the formic props well I guess we don't really need them here so we can keep that commented out so when it suggests here what I want to do is uh, take the latitude and longitude so let's let's just grab that real quick so that's in the location latitude longitude so I want to grab these two values and update our formic with that now this is slightly different than what we've done before because usually we just have one value that we're updating but now we're updating two values so we could do something like this we're only inputting one name here we could do some kind of custom prop um, where we call it I don't know names and then we pass in the latitude and longitude or whatever we want there but I think the easiest thing to do here is to actually just hard code the two values that we want to update because um, I think it would be too hard to try to make this generic so what I'm going to do is update two values and the way we do that with formic is I can grab from the props something called and from the form called set values so the other thing we've used before is set field value but that only lets us update one what set values does is this actually updates all the values at once so we also need to grab the values or the current values because now when we say set values we want to keep all the values that we currently are storing so for example the name or the all the other values that have already been inputted and we really just want to update the latitude and the longitude which I think let me just double check we did long form yep I didn't shorten them so let's copy that paste those in so now we're changing the latitude the latitude is going to be lat longitude is long and now what I want to do is just have this as a div and display the values that way we can actually see them and I'm going to grab that from the props as well so from the form I'm going to get values and here I'm going to display values dot longitude and also get the latitude so now we'll be able to see the longitude and longitude as we're picking the value. Let's go ahead and see that in action now. So the default is going to be zero for both. Then I type in New York. I haven't picked something yet, so it's still zero. Let's say we click that, and now we update our values here. 
So what we're going to do in the next video is take this latitude and longitude and that'll be our initial starting point that we look on the map and we can just kind of view this area and then maybe move the latitude and longitude around a little bit if we want to. But that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching.